Imagine a civilization so advanced it can harness the full energy of its planet, its star, even its galaxy. This is the concept of the Kardashev scale, a method of measuring a civilization's level of technological advancement. So, what is this Kardashev scale? Invented by Russian astrophysicist Nikolai Kardashev, it's a hypothetical scale that categorizes civilizations based on their ability to harness energy. The scale is divided into three types, type 1, type 2, and type 3. A type 1 civilization, also known as a planetary civilization, can use and store all of the energy available on its planet. Picture a world where no energy is wasted, where every ray of sunlight, every gust of wind, every rumble of geothermal heat is captured and utilized. That's a type 1 civilization. Then we have a type 2 civilization or a stellar civilization. These advanced beings have gone beyond their planet, managing to harness the full energy of their star. Imagine being able to tap into the sun's power, to use it as we use a power outlet today. That's the level of a type 2 civilization. Finally, we arrive at a type 3 civilization, a galactic civilization. These civilizations are so advanced that they can control energy on the scale of their entire galaxy. Imagine harnessing the power of not just one star, but billions of stars, using the energy of black holes, quasars, and dark matter. That's the realm of a type 3 civilization. Where do we humans stand on this scale? Well, we're currently a type 0 civilization, still dependent on fossil fuels and not yet able to fully harness the energy of our planet. But we're on the cusp, teetering on the edge of becoming a type 1 civilization. However, the transition to a type 1 civilization is not an easy leap to make. Here's why we humans may never reach that level. A type 1 civilization can use and store all of the energy available on its planet, but how much energy does that actually mean? Let's delve into the numbers. Our planet, Earth, is bathed in energy every day. Imagine a waterfall of light cascading down from the sun, a torrent of energy that doesn't stop. This incoming solar radiation amounts to a staggering 174 petawatts. A petawatt, for those who may not know, is a quadrillion watts. That's 15 zeros after the one. It's an astronomical figure, so vast that it's quite challenging to wrap our heads around it. Now let's compare this to the energy consumption of our civilization. All the lights, heaters, air conditioners and machines around the world, every car, plane and ship, every smartphone, every piece of technology that consumes electricity, all add up to about 18 terawatts of energy. A terawatt is a trillion watts. That's 12 zeros following the one. It's a big number, no doubt, but it's dwarfed by the energy our planet receives from the sun. So, let's paint a picture here. If we were to compare the energy we use as a civilization to the energy the Earth receives from the sun, it would be like comparing a teacup of water to an Olympic-sized swimming pool. The gap is not just large, it's enormous. This vast chasm between our current energy usage and the energy available to us is one of the reasons we're not a Type 1 civilization yet. We're simply not harnessing the energy potential of our planet to its full extent. It's like having a gold mine and only scratching the surface. Clearly our energy consumption is nowhere near what is needed to be a Type 1 civilization, but there's more to it than just energy. The journey to becoming a Type 1 civilization is not only about consuming energy, but also about how we generate, store and distribute this energy. It's a multifaceted challenge that will test the limits of our innovation, resilience and determination. Becoming a Type 1 civilization isn't just about energy consumption, it's also about technological advancement and societal evolution. Diving headfirst into the realm of technological advancement, we find ourselves amidst a sea of challenges. A Type 1 civilization on the Kardashev scale would need to harness and control the entire energy output of the Earth. That's not just a matter of increasing power generation, but it involves significant technological leaps. Consider our current pace of technological evolution. It's remarkably fast, but not nearly enough. To reach Type 1 status, we would need to accelerate this pace exponentially. We would need to invent technologies not yet conceived, solve problems not yet understood, and overcome hurdles not yet encountered. Resource scarcity is one such hurdle. From rare earth metals to clean water, we're already stretching the limits of our planet's resources. As we advance, our demand for these resources will inevitably rise, potentially to unsustainable levels. We'll need to master technologies to recycle, reuse and find alternatives to these resources, or perhaps even learn to extract them from space. 
environmental degradation poses another challenge. Our current methods of energy production are already causing significant harm to our environment. A Type 1 civilization would need to generate energy on a vastly larger scale, yet do so in a way that doesn't exacerbate climate change or harm the planet's ecosystems. That's a tall order, and it would require technologies that are clean, efficient, and sustainable on a level we've yet to achieve. Then there's the matter of implementing these advancements globally. Technological disparities between nations could create a barrier to reaching Type 1 status. We would need not just to develop these technologies, but to ensure they are accessible and feasible for all nations, regardless of their current level of development. These challenges are monumental, perhaps insurmountable, but there's one more factor that could prevent us from becoming a Type 1 civilization. A Type 1 civilization would require a global society, unified and collaborative, but our current societal structures are far from this ideal. Let's delve into the hurdles that impede societal evolution, the stumbling blocks that keep us from reaching that coveted Type 1 status. Political conflicts, economic inequalities and cultural differences, these are the walls that we, as a species, need to tear down. Political conflicts often arise from a struggle for power, resources and influence. They can be as small as a local dispute or as large as a global war. In the last century alone, we've seen two world wars, countless regional conflicts and the persistent threat of nuclear war. These conflicts create divisions, foster hostility and hinder the global cooperation necessary for a Type 1 civilization. Then we have economic inequalities. The global wealth distribution is staggeringly skewed. The richest 1% of the population holds almost half of the world's total wealth. This vast economic divide breeds resentment, fosters social instability and obstructs the unified effort needed to advance as a civilization. And let's not forget about cultural differences. Our world is a vibrant tapestry of diverse cultures, each with its unique traditions, beliefs and values. These differences can enrich our global society, but they can also lead to misunderstandings, prejudices and conflicts. Overcoming these cultural divides is critical for us to evolve into a global, collaborative society. But it's not all doom and gloom. We've made strides in resolving conflicts, reducing inequalities and promoting cultural understanding. We've established international organisations, implemented wealth redistribution policies and celebrated cultural diversity. We're making progress, however slow and arduous it may be. Yet, the reality remains. These hurdles are significant. They stand in the way of our evolution into a Type 1 civilization. They challenge us to rise above our differences, to strive for equality, and to work together for our collective future. These hurdles present a significant obstacle to our evolution into a Type 1 civilization. So, will we ever become a Type 1 civilization? The data suggests it's highly unlikely. We've walked through the sheer magnitude of energy consumption it would take to reach this level. A number so astronomical it's almost unfathomable. We've dived into the complexities of technological advancement. The challenges that stand in our path seem insurmountable. And we've grappled with the societal evolution required. A shift in our collective consciousness that appears just beyond our reach. If we peer into the future, these implications paint a daunting picture. A world where our dreams of harnessing the full energy of our planet remain just that, dreams. However, these challenges should not deter us but spur us on. They should ignite our curiosity, fuel our innovation, and remind us of our extraordinary capacity for adaptation and resilience. While we may dream of a future where we harness the full energy of our planet, the realities of our energy use, technological advancement, and societal evolution, suggest that we humans may never become a Type 1 civilization.